Hi there, I'm Vicky Parfano from Vicky Parfano Stamps. Welcome. Today, I thought it would be a great opportunity for you to get to know me a little bit more. And so I've planned a scrapbooking project for you in a traveler's notebook using some of my digital stamps and just explaining to you how they work. And um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what's going on in my world and we can have a bit of a chit chat, a bit of scrapbooking time together. I have some tips for saving money with some really cool little frames I found down at Kmart. So I'll be bringing those in. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, my Instax camera and my traveler's notebooks and about my family. And so I thought it would be a good opportunity to just settle back, grab yourself a coffee or a tea and we'll get to know each other a little more. So today I brought in my Webster's Pages traveler's notebook and this is the one I'm currently working on. And I've made a bit of a charm. This is a Prima charm and I've added some feathers and some thread to it to make it a little bit more my own, but I quite like that. And inside, when this notebook arrives, you get a plain notebook inside like this. This one says hello. So I've, you know, I've got other notebooks sitting in here. I've got other things that I've done in here as well. So there are other things that I'm working on. And I use my traveler's notebook for uh, lots of different things. But I love scrapbooking in it. I'd say that my documenting or scrapbooking is my favourite thing to do. So I'm just going to pull out this little book that came with the notebook. And I'm going to cover it. And I'm going to work on a scrapbook layout with you on the inside pages using my digital stamps. So I've got a whole array of stuff here. So let's go through what I've brought out. These are just things I've pulled out of my stash. And because it's about the Instax camera, I've just got my little sticker that came with the camera sitting there. But this is the film that you get in an Instax camera. You can see it's got the divisions around it, similar to this. But this was not made with an Instax camera. This is actually made with the Kmart inserts. Now it comes with a packet like this. Instant photo frames, it makes 10 frames, adhesive, makes five standard and five mini self-adhesive photo frames. So it has the larger size in there as well, which have a backing on them. And, and this back peels off. So I don't really have large photos to work with today. My little puppy has just come in to join us. Come on, come and sit with us. <laughs> He's rattling his collar and he wants to be a part of this, so I'll bring him in too. Um, so I wanted to show you how you can make a photo look like You've taken it with your Instax camera. Does that make sense? So how I made these little frames is I went down to my Kmart and you can do these, what they call collage, very inexpensive. I mean, it's really inexpensive to get your photos printed at Kmart. So I chose collage and then I cut out a couple of prints that I wanted to use. And these are the two that are going in my spread today. And this is the size I cut mine down to. And then I'll just remove some of these bits and pieces here. I'll take my trimmer out of the way. I have a coffee here. So if you haven't got yourself a coffee or a tea, pause the video and go and get one because this will be going for a while. But I just wanted to chat with you and give you a chance to get to know me a bit more. Okay. So these are the photos and what I've done, this is the kit again, I, it was only a couple of dollars really, very inexpensive. It does say it's adhesive but you know, I don't know if I'm going to be using that back piece in my spread or not because the back piece is quite thick. So I'll just show you that. It might make my spread a bit too um, dimensional but you know, I'm still... The jury is out on it. You can see I've already adhered that piece to the back. It's got some sticky on it so I'm going to leave that upwards facing upwards so I don't get more sticky on it but I'll show you how they work so I have this photo here and I'm going to take I've got one of the backing pieces I'm going to take the frame here's the frame here and I'm going to just peel that backing piece off so it's a really a faux Instax photograph <laughs> Pretty cool, right? 
I thought this was a neat idea, so I wanted to share it. And I'm just going to line up the photo where I think it looks best. I don't I want to make sure no one's head is chopped off and I've kind of got a nice arrangement there. So this photo was of my daughter's birthday party and we had the entire family there. We went out to a restaurant. It was a special birthday and it was just a lovely memory. And I'm going to put in two photos in my spread, both of lovely memories. So this was the night that Paul and I were engaged. That was the restaurant we were at and that was the night he asked me to marry him and I said yes. So that was pretty special. And then this was my birth, uh, my daughter's birthday. So yeah, my whole, whole family is there. All the people I love are there. And it was a really nice night. Now, you know, as, as far as photographs go, the waiter took this one. So there's a bit of a halo going above somebody's head there but that's okay i don't mind these are happy snaps and they're going to go into my traveler's notebook i love working in this size notebook for documenting because it's a smaller canvas and it's not as intimidating as if you had a huge 12 inch by 12 inch or 30 centimeter 33 centimeters i don't know uh, 12, <laughs> the large albums um i did scrapbooking in the large albums for Oh, so many years, I couldn't tell you. I probably have about 20 of those large albums. And I love them, absolutely adore them, but they're very difficult to store on a shelf. Most bookshelves just aren't deep enough or tall enough. And so I have them sitting in a box in the garage, which is really, really sad. I, I really want them out where I can see them. And with all my journals, I keep them all on a shelf. They're readily available for me. So that's why I love this size. So this particular one, I'll give you the measurements of this size notebook. It is four and three tenths of an inch by eight and a quarter inches. And I'll give it to you in centimetres as well. Look, my ruler is getting really dirty because I use this so much. It's got a bit of glue on it. I should give it a wash, I think. <laughs> Eleven centimetres by 21 centimetres. And this is going to work perfectly with my two digital stamped downloads that I have here for my scrapbook kit. So I have a suite and it's it's hiding under here <laughs> and I'll bring it out in a minute, which is designed for project life or this size scrapbooking. Or if you had say um, a four by six inch album that you're working in, these scrapbook papers would work really well for that too. So I'm going to clear away what we have and I'm going to bring out the scrapbook papers that I have designed. And these will all be available in my store. Here they are. I'm very proud of these. <laughs> I just love them. This is called Pink Blossom Sweet. So I wanted to name it in a way that you would understand exactly what it was. But we have some journaling blocks and we have some scrapbook paper in this. And it's a beautiful cherry blossom tree. And this is the branches going one way. This is the upright version of the tree. But you can turn them any way you want to. So this is Pink Blossom Sweet. And I'm going to start cutting into it to show you how I'm going to make a cover for my Traveller's Notebook since it doesn't have a cover yet and how I'm going to create the scrapbook page with my faux in, um, Instax <laughs> photographs that are going to go in there as well. So I'll show you how. It's really simple. I'm going to start with the biggest one first because I want to lay my paper this way. So as you can see, that's going to fit with a little bit even left over. Now there will be a little bit of a white line top and bottom because this has been printed out on A4 and it may be the same if you're printing this out on US letter size. Uh, you just adjust your printing to whatever size you have in your printer, uh, whatever size printer paper you have. I, I have used um, US letter size as well and I'll just give you a comparison of A4 versus US letter size now. These are two of my stamp sets here. This is a journaling word set and this is a quote blocks. It's all just quote blocks in this one. And this will have some scrapbooking paper that is going with it as well. I'm still designing that one, working on that one. But you can see the difference in size when you print these out. So this is A4 
this is US letter size now if I you can see there's a difference the US letter size is a little bit shorter and it's a little bit wider so when I design these I make sure that they're going to work on either A4 or US letter size and send them out that way so all you need to do is adjust it in your printer just choose your paper size whichever paper size you're printing now I've printed these out on plain print, printer paper these I've done on cardstock this is a Nina Solar white cardstock eight and a half by eleven inches this is an A4 sheet of shimmery white cardstock you can't really see the shimmer unless it's up really close these are quite thick but for this purpose I'm just going to use plain printer paper this is an inexpensive project and that's one of the things I really like about it you don't need to go out and buy an Instax camera you can buy these little photo frames from Kmart for a few dollars and turn your prints that you get at Kmart into Instax prints or you can use Instax photos if you want to in this it's up to you so this is what they look like so let's have a look we have this moment grow where you're planted enjoy the little things I love you cherish this forever and oh happy day I'm just going to take these embellishments that I've set out earlier and just move them out of the way so we've got a little bit of room to work here so I can get these in camera there we go I think these are a really pretty suite of colors I love the spring feel about it but to me it's also just a really romantic paper suite so I'm going to line this up and we're going to trim down the cover to fit now with these covers you can see they're not entirely flat so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it a bit longer than I need it and then I'll cut it down later so I'm going to trim right to this line here now you notice on the scrapbook papers that one side is much deeper than the other you want to be cutting on this deep side because this will not fit your entire cover although it'll work nicely as an inside piece and I'll show you how to layer that as background on the inside of this as well but this is the one we want to use for the cover so I'm just going to trim that down now oh it's a really nice day in Sydney today we had have had such hot weather and I was unable to get in here we don't have air conditioning in our home I would like to get it put in by next summer I have kind of said to Paul we need to get that in by next summer so I can work all through the day in the studio um, I've really been itching to get back in here and the other thing I have planned is I might do a studio tour at some point with you further down the track and um, show you my workspace I have some really good storage ideas and I like to be very frugal in how I work so I don't have absolutely everything in terms of crafting materials but boy I, I do have a lot so <laughs> I'll give you the tour um, at some point in a later video all right now I've cut this down and I want to adhere it to this and I'm going to use a couple of different things to adhere it with I am going to use double-sided tape this is express it double-sided tape I find it's a really good quality one you can pick these up in the dollar shop and things like that or at K uh, Kmart no I don't think they do have it I'm not sure they might I think they have um, double-sided state um, excuse me double-sided tape in their stationary section it's not in the scrapbook section and it's much thicker than this so whatever tape you use it's fine it's up to you I find this is a really good quality one and the other thing I'm going to use is some of this Tombow multi-adhesive glue and uh, this is a mono liquid glue and it's just going to give me some extra insurance you can see I keep them upside down in this little black container I bought it came out for two dollars it just fits six of these perfectly now you probably don't have six but because I teach classes here in the studio I, I pop these on the table and I say to everybody put them in upside down because it means that the glue is near the surface when you go to work on it again all right now I've cut off my little piece there I'm just going to need this piece and I want it to go this way so if you go this way it's not going to be wide enough as you can see so you got to make sure you're going to go this way alrighty now what I want to do is it's plenty um, plenty of width but I'm going to keep this 
border around the edge because I think that looks really, really smart. And on the back, we're going to have a border top and bottom, but not on the edge. So you'll be able to tell which is the back and which is the front. And that's something else that I planned. So you know where your front of your notebook is and where the back is. Now, if you preferred it to look a different way, if you preferred it to look this way with just the two lines at the front, you just adhere it this way and make this your front. So I might do that just as a change from what I normally do. What I do want to do though is find the center and you know I could be really fancy I could bring in a, um, a trimming tool I could do all kinds of things here but you know what I'm not going to because it's just as easy to use your hands wouldn't you agree just make sure it's straight just make sure you've straightened up the edges there so you've got it nice and straight now that looks pretty cool to me that's your other side mm, I kind of like that too I mean I don't know either of those would be fine um, and then this is going to pop on like this right and you can see it's going to make a nice solid cover for it adhere the front and then you're going to flip it over and adhere the back that's just the easiest way to do it and I find because you might be trimming this down a little bit more you might be trimming a hair's breadth off this depending on what size your notebook is I'm going to adhere to the cover first and all I'm going to do is take the double-sided tape I'm going to rip off that first little piece because this was sitting in the cupboard without any um, plastic bag on it usually I put a plastic bag on it otherwise you end up with all this I don't know it's like greasy mess all around the other side of it so I'm just going to lay this down and if you've watched any of my card making videos on my Aussie Stampers channel you know I'm really pedantic about this step but when I'm using double-sided tape and I think it's important tear it beyond the edge like that because what I see people do is they put it on, they tear it here, they tear it there, and the edges don't have any adhesive on them. And, and the edges are going to be what you want to really keep nice and secure so that they don't curl up on you. All right, so that's the first strip. And I'm going to grab my scissors and just trim it. Now, normally in my videos, I'd have all this section sped up, but I thought, well, you know, I'm going to do this in real time. I will um, edit out some of the bits where I go and answer the doorbell or do things like that or give the dog um, his breakfast. He's wanting some breakfast. So I'm going to take it down the two long sides first so that we get plenty of adhesion near the spine. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space where the staples are because I'm going to use that glue in the middle and that's going to give me a little bit of wiggle room with this opening and closing rather than taping right to the edge so if I do both sides but I won't peel off both sides you get an idea of how this is going to work Just get it as close as you can to the edge. Now I'm going to trim the edge off all of those. So if you make some uh, projects with these materials, I'd love if you hashtagged Vicky Parfano stamps and I'll come and have a look at what you've been making too. Uh, I have a, an Instagram account which is Vicky Parfano and I'd love to see what it is you're up to as well. Once this channel is up and rolling and has been on the air for a while I'm going to create a Facebook group I have one in Aussie Stampers called uh, Stampers Art Gallery and it's been really great. I run competitions over there once a month and that's been really good as a way of um, developing our community of stampers. It's a really nice friendly group and I'm hoping to get a similar group going on this channel as well. 
so that you'd have somewhere where you can show what you're making and all sorts of goodies like that. I really love scrapbooking and for a long time I didn't do much scrapbooking. Um, my children were older and I was a single woman for a while and I didn't really feel that I wanted to go back to scrapbooking. But now my family are growing and I realise how important it is to celebrate the good times because it's good to look back on the good times when things aren't going so well. And in families, you know, there are there are crises and things that happen with everybody. And I found two photos that I really, really felt epitomised our happy family. I thought it was just a beautiful thing to be able to look back on those events and go, yeah, that was really special. So I know we all have events like that. And it is important to document them. All right, so we're ready here. We're, we've got our fold sorted. We know where the halfway point is. And I'm going to put some glue on my paper. So the, the paper is going to be glued and this is going to have the two strips on it. Just peel those off. I'm going to adhere the paper, the glue to the paper, but not getting too much of this on. This is one of those glues that less is more. When I first started using this, I absolutely hated it because I kept thinking, oh, I have to use a lot of glue. Well, you don't. That's heaps. What I've used there is heaps. You've got your sides covered, so you don't have to worry too much about that. I would go top and bottom with an extra strip like that because we don't have tape on the top and bottom. But this is how I think it needs to work. So line it up right on your crease line. And make sure that your back piece is level. Like if you if you do this, you can see how the back piece isn't quite level. So line up your back piece as well as your front piece. If you want it to be straight. How cool is that? Wow, you know, have a pretty cover on the front. And basically, if you've got any glue that smushes out, like mine just did then, um, just grab some printer paper and use that to, to smooth it out. Okay, and I'm going to turn this around and duplicate that on the back. So rather than trying to open it flat and cover it while it's like this what will happen is it will not take into account that you have this thickness here and it's going to bubble up and not look great so all I'm doing is just turning to the back and repeating that process so I'm going to take the strips off first And the same with the glue, you want some across the top and bottom in a straight line, I guess, but not too close to the edge. And then the rest you can just apply, as I said, like this, and less is more. You don't need a huge amount, but you do need some in there where the staples are. So I'm going to run a final piece right near the edge there. And same again, and it should just want to sit exactly where you put it if you've kept it nice and straight now that couldn't be simpler right that's a really easy way to cover your traveler's notebook and it looks gorgeous and all that's left is to take some scissors and trim off the excess around any of the edges so i'll take my large scissors these scissors <laughs> Uh, magnetic <laughs> so they're sticking to everything these scissors I got from Costco in a set of three um, the scotch titanium not very expensive they cut beautifully and oh, I just love them um, I do love my paper snips for fussy cutting my small scissors but these are great for something like this 
because you've got a nice long line. And just take a little bit of time so it's nice and straight, but you can use the book cover as your guide. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, and same on the back. So documenting is such an important thing. I think we live in a really busy world and time seems to be speeding up. You know, everybody I talk to says, oh, you know, time is going by so fast and it's important to document our lives. If we are the sort of people who love scrapbooking and things like that, don't put it off, just do it. Um, the photos that I've taken today, they're not brilliant photographs. I do have a beautiful uh, Nikon camera uh, with some gorgeous lenses and I can, I can take some really lovely photos when I want to but it's often the happy snaps that capture the moment you know they're very candid they are on the on the spur of the moment you'll say oh I have to photograph that so you might take out your iPhone or you might take out your Instax camera and you're going to photograph something that is meaningful in the moment and you know cameras these days are much less expensive than they used to be Anybody who has um, an Android phone or something like um, an iPhone can f make t really nice photographs just with a, s a few simple, simple ways of photographing things on their phone. It's really good. You don't have to know a whole lot of technical skill. I use some really good um, photo editing apps. I use Snapseed, which I really like. I think it's a great, easy to use app. I use that for a lot of my social media stuff as well um, and putting text on things, but yeah, just, you know, editing and making it look good. It's pretty simple. When I printed out the photos, I just took my phone and my charging cord and plugged it into the booth at Kmart and I hadn't used their booths before. I'd been using my home printer to print photos, which is good too. And um, it was such an easy process. <laughs> it was really good. So if you haven't tried using a booth, it's very inexpensive. Okay, so there's our cover finished. And front and back looks really, really nice. Oh, I like that. I do like that a lot. Okay, now, next thing is our double page spread. Now, I like to leave the first page. It's like, how do you break a blank page? It's really hard to do, right? And that first page is often the most difficult. But I'll come back and do that as a title page later on when I've filled up my album. So I know what the feel of the album is and I know what colour schemes I'm using and I know what's in it. So we're getting to the first double page and I like to give it a good crease just to make sure it's not going to um, go anywhere flip around on me oh. okay now I'm bringing in um, my pink blossom sweet paper and get started on the layout right so we still have these elements to go so there's plenty here I want to use this background as one of the sides of the paper and I'm going to use it on this side simply because uh, this is going to be nice and flat at the moment and I might actually think about doing some decoration on this side so I'm going to put my embellishments on this side you see I've got some sequins out here and oh those things I moved around earlier where are they yes I have some paper doilies now these are really inexpensive at your hot dollar shop I like Nouveau drops and I have a whole stack of these but you know it's not necessary to have <laughs> I do like the diamonds on the top I think that's what I really like Nouveau jewel drops so these add dimensional translucent tints to your paper craft projects so only a few dollars a bottle they're not that expensive and I have some washi tape and this I thought would go really beautifully with paper so it has some rose gold and some pink soft pink in it and washi tape is something you can pick up on your travels this is part of I think um, something I picked up at spotlight it's actually a baby kit but it has some chipboards in it I don't know if I'm going to use them or not but they might come in right near the end and I found this Celebrate wooden word. Now you can get wooden words like this again in a dollar shop. They're not expensive. 
and I thought I might um, color that up so that it's going to match something on the page so I might bring in my ink pads and color that up or some paint or something not quite sure yet what I'm going to do there but that's going to be something that we do too so for now I want to get my first page on here my background piece so I'm going to cut this as a background piece and it's very technical <laughs> so hmm I'm a bit embarrassed to tell you how I do this but you know I'm not a big one for measuring and cutting unless everything has to be absolutely precise using a good sharp pair of scissors and taking your time with a steady hand will work really well as well and I'm a lefty so all you lefties out there you'll appreciate that sometimes we look a little bit uh, I don't know, khaki handed is what we call it. We say in Australia, khaki handed if you're a lefty. That's a really weird saying, I know. Um, I know in the US you might say I'm a Southpaw. I don't know. I think, yeah, is that right? Let me know if that's right. I think that's right. Okay, so I'm just going to cut trim that down for now. So we have our journaling blocks. We have two of those left to use up. And you can see I haven't been that exact, but that's okay. I'll trim that when I get to it. For now, I want to make the background paper. So I want a nice straight edge here, but I want to cut off this white piece. I don't really need that white piece showing. I want to go straight to the pink. So the old trimmer comes in at this point. And I'm just going to cut off that white edge. Cut that down, too easy. I'm going to cut that piece that I cut with my scissors too easy just cut that square so we now have two square pieces here now some of my favorite places where I go for my craft supplies um, of course my papers and my stamps I design myself so I don't need to buy those at all so <laughs> I just design them as I need them but if I want things like adhesive or if I want um, embellishments or things like that, all those little extra things that kind of make scrapbooking fun. <laughs> Let's face it, they are the fun. Now, this is really technical measuring and I'll show you what I mean. I've lined up those edges and all I'm going to do is crease that with my fingernail and know that that's the cut line. <laughs> so... You know, if you're one of those people who loves to measure, by all means measure. But, uh, you know, for me, it's just go to the cut line. And there's our background piece. And we still have some more that I can layer under these journaling boxes. So I won't um, get rid of that at the moment. I want to keep that close by. Okay. The beauty of having papers that you've printed out on printer paper means that you're Traveller's notebook isn't going to get overly thick. So really thick paper, <clears throat> excuse me, really thick paper is good in small amounts, but you don't want to use too much of it. All right, now where's the front of my book? And where's the back of my book? Right, make sure, <laughs> make sure I'm not putting it upside down. Okay, so here we go. And first page is going to go down. Now for this, I like to be really quick. I don't want to be worrying about glue. I don't want to be doing any of that. So I get a tape runner. Now a tape runner, you want a good quality one and there are lots of different brands out there on the market. You want something that's not going to um, give you card fail, meaning, you know, you put it on and then when you, <laughs> when you open your book again, the whole thing falls off. But just make sure you take it right to the edges. You should be fine as long as it's a good brand. And then I just go, along all sides like this now if you wanted to create a pocket for memorabilia you could leave the top open and you could pop in a tag or something like that this can go whichever way you like so i think that way looks good good first page sorted leave a little bit under there
and I'm going to bring in my photos. And see where I'd like them to go. And my I love you is probably going to go on this one because this was our, or maybe cherish this forever is kind of cute. You know, I mean, the, the day somebody asks you to marry them is pretty special. So maybe it is something that you cherish forever. Um, oh, happy day. I mean, any of those are going to work. Oh, oh, happy day is good. Let's see what else we have and what's going to work here. This moment, gorgeous. That is lovely. Grow where you're planted. Enjoy the little things. Well, for me, I think it's going to be, oh, happy day. I think so. I think that's going to be what goes on this one. So I'll get that one ready now. Now I quite like that against black. I think that looks really nice. I also have a doily that could go in here as well. So maybe that would work. Oh, that's nice too. But I like both. I like the black and I like the doily. So I've brought in some really pale pink card stock and some black card stock. And I want to mount this one with the black. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to use this moment underneath this photo here. So I think that's going to look beautiful mounted up on some pale pink, really soft colours. Okay. And we've still got this little doily that, you know, can be in the mix as well. So cut this one out. I'd love to know what sort of crafts your favourite crafts are. So if you are a scrapbooker or somebody who loves to do art journals or somebody who likes making cards or somebody who likes doing sketching or watercolour painting, let me know in the comments underneath. I'd like to hear what you like to do because my projects can be geared towards what your favourite things are. So. These papers are fantastic in art journals. They're also good as for using as cards. They're also good using, as I said, in Project Life albums too. They're great for. So, yeah, let me know. And um, I'll try to accommodate what your needs are as best I can. So, again, you can see I'm a real um, <laughs> professional trimmer. I just use the scissors, you know. After making cards for years and years and years, I've probably made thousands of cards. And I have a pretty good eye for keeping things pretty straight. So, and not everybody owns a paper trimmer either. We're just assuming that, you know, you might have a paper trimmer, but, you know, maybe you don't. So scissors work. Let's see how straight I managed to get that. Oh, not bad at all, Vicky. <laughs> Not bad at all. Okay, I want to leave some um, space for journaling. And I think the journaling is going to come at the bottom of this page because this one's going to have sort of something like this and then we've got Oh Happy Day happening here. So I think the journaling maybe could go at the bottom. Um, I want this to speak to this, so I don't really want journaling in the middle of that. So I think this will be my journaling place here. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, now the Oh Happy Day needs a bit of black background so again I'm just going to eyeball it so I was talking about some of the places I really like to go for my craft supplies in Australia we have a, a store called spotlight which I find is really good for your basic supplies um, Kmart is excellent for some things, not all things. I mean, some of their things I really do like. Their um, papers, not necessarily as much as the other stuff they sell. And, and 
the glue, um, the liquid glue and things are fine, but I just find the Tombow Multi is, seems to be what most paper crafters use. They use something similar to that. And I think sometimes if you skimp on your glue or your tape runner, then everything's going to fall apart on you when you don't want it to. So, but yeah, great things that came out and they change what they have often. Uh, we have variety stores that sometimes have stickers or planners or things like that. Big, uh, Big W, Target, um, those sorts of places. We don't have very many scrapbook stores in Australia, not very many at all, but often you can go to a scrapbook store. But I tend to find that they have a lot of old um, stock, a lot of them. So I like to keep things fresh and whatever's trending, which is why I like designing my own stuff. But... Um, just trim that little piece back there that is peeking through. Yeah, so they're some of my favourite places I like to go. Hot dollar shops can sometimes be really good for basic art supplies. They generally stock them on Mark brand, which is the student level of art supplies. But then I love going to my art store and picking up really nice things from there as well. So, yeah, interesting. Again, what I want to do is bring some of this colour back in. So I'm going to mount this on some of the pink oh yeah now we're talking okay so same again I'm just going to and I'm you notice I haven't adhered it with glue because it means I've still got space to change my mind if I want to if I don't like the way it looks I can just take it off but yeah I'm going to trim this down Oh, nice. And it picks up the blue in Paul shirt. Uh, the blue, the pink, the pink, the pink in Paul shirt. <laughs> I always switch pink and blue. Don't ask me why. I was telling everybody I had a lovely um, pink <laughs> in the next camera. And I went, no, it's not pink. It's actually, this is called ice blue. It's really pretty, isn't it? They put this little um, close up. Yeah, it's like a close up lens that flicks off on it. I think that's something new. I don't think they always had that. Let me know, though. And the other thing they've got here is a little selfie mirror. So you can line up your own face in the lens and take a selfie instead of sort of taking the ceiling or taking the carpet, which, let's face it, we've all done it right. Yeah, so now I, I often call this um, my pretty pink camera when, in fact, it's, it's ice blue. <laughs> okay, so tape runner, again, is great for layering all your pieces. So the idea is cut a little bit bigger than you need because you can always trim down. You can't go back the other way. That Oh, that looks good. I'm liking that. Oh, I do like that. That's really lovely. Okay, this one I'm going to leave on this background because this is going to be on the same background over here. This is going to have some of this around it. And I remember I'm going to put some Nouveau drops in here somewhere. So I might put them, I might put them actually on the frames. I think that would look really kind of cool. Yeah. And we still have Celebrate. Yes, yes, I love it. Okay, now this needs to be coloured to match our rest of our embellishments. So best way to do that is with some ink. I kind of want this mid mid pink colour here. So, hmm, I have an idea that I might use a stamp pad and see how it works. I have another celebrate. So if it doesn't work, I have backup. <laughs> So I have some ink here. This is Stampin' Up Ink. It's called Sweet Sugar Plum. Let's see how this works. So what I'm going to do is just basically lay it in and tap it. Ooh, I like that. That is really nice. So there's a little bit missing on this end. I'll just give that a little bit more. Ooh, lovely. Well, I'm going to need that to dry, so I'll set that aside before I try and put it on the page. It's quite dark, but I'm assuming it's going to dry this. Look how, how soft that colour is. Hang on, I'll show you on the back. That's supposed to be that colour. So we'll see if it dries lighter. If it doesn't, that might be a little bit too dark. So I've got another colour. I'm going to try another colour too, and we'll see which one we're going to use. 
this one's a really pale pink this one's called pink pirouette so you can see it's much much lighter we'll see what this looks like colored right I'm tap him in tapity tap tapity tap here we go oh that's really subtle and really pretty I think it'd go another coat though it's almost a little bit too light so we'll tap it again tap 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 secret is not to get the ink all over your hands but you know inky fingers are good right <laughs> it's part of the fun oh yeah that looks beautiful look at that that looks really nice so I haven't decided which one we'll just keep both of them there and I'll use whichever one I think is going to work all right I think we are almost at the closing gate now I've still got this nice washi tape that I really want to use as well and I think this is what can really bring your photographs to the next level all right let's get this page sorted first I'm going to put this one commit this one down and then this one I'm going to cut I don't want to see all of that that's kind of interesting so I'm just going to fold it into roughly thirds yeah roughly fold it into thirds so it's like a little dress shape I guess and tuck one under each corner oh that is pretty I like that a lot okay oh yeah this is where the washi needs to come in on this side and I've got some of that plain rose gold which I really like as well okay okay so I'm going to adhere this I like that because it's just a peak of the doily it's not a whole doily so you kind of think oh that's interesting I don't know what that is there but it's interesting Okay, and I'm going to snail this down too, or adhere this with the tape runner. It does look like a snail trail, doesn't it, this tape? Okay. It's important that you get that straight. <laughs> yep, that's good. This one I'm going to adhere next. And this one I want to bring in some of that nice washi tape and I want to kind of make it look like it's adhered with washi tape now you could actually make it something that flips off up for your journaling and for me I think that's what I might do because I'm going to put this word celebrate down the bottom but if I flip this up I can write my journaling underneath so yes I'm going to have this as I guess this is what you would call a tip in some people call them tip ins I call them a a flap just a flap but other people call them tip ins either way is fine I think I do believe <laughs> all righty ah, there we are and so easy enough to make a washi tape flap this is going to go there this is going to go there So now we have a tip in for my journaling and what I like to do with my journaling boxes that I have a tip in with is I just grab a pencil and I mark the spot on the edge which I can come back and rub out later on I can erase this later on but I just do some guidelines so that when I do my journaling I don't go beyond that zone 
because if your journaling comes beyond that it's going to spoil the look of the page so that's just for reference when I come to writing up the story and doing the documenting of these two special events I love this I love the fact that it's come out in that beautiful soft pink this one was too dark this one looks perfect so the way to adhere this is with some fine tip glue because I could use the Tombow multi liquid glue but I'm just not brave enough really <laughs> so I'm going to use a fine tip glue pen for this and this will hold it a little bit firmer anyway just simply because it's a reasonably heavy element oh I love how this page is coming together I'd love to see your layouts and what you do especially if you use travelers notebooks or project life kits or you've got the smaller sized albums but you know if you use 12 by 12 you can still buy this scrapbook paper and cut it up in your 12 by 12 albums as well and use it for all kinds of different things similar to what we're using here just in a different size this is a really economical way to scrapbook because you're not buying a whole suite of 12 papers that you're going to probably use one or two and then not use the rest but the other reason it's economical is you can print this out as many times as you want so if for instance you wanted to do another page in the back of this traveler's notebook with this kind of a theme you just print this out again it's just printed out on printer paper it's very economical to do so that's why I like this form of documenting now does that look straight to you it does to me I'm standing up so I can see it because when I sit down it's it's harder to line everything up all right so now the final thing I want to do is add some Nouveau drops and the place that's crying out for the Nouveau drops is the white edges of the faux Instax frames so I'm going to start that off on some scratch paper first I've just got some leftover pink here I'm going to try this on just when you're first using this sort of thing give it a test run because if there's bubbles in the lid here it'll spoil your work it also gives you an idea of how big they're going to be so I'm going to put some pale pink on here and you want to do this last because they take ages to dry and you will squash them if you're doing other things on your page so this is pretty much the last thing I have on my page I'm just going to check that I don't have something else that I wanted to add before we finish but I think we're nearly there so I hope I didn't ramble on too much I hope you enjoyed watching it I hope you like this suite of papers that I have designed for you and I'm even going to put a little dot down here because this oh happy day is made on bokeh effect paper which is the paper with the dots which I love and it's kind of a, a photography trick that people use and I love that bokeh effect so I had to design that as part of the papers okay this side is looking just a little bit pale to me so I'm going to bring in something else here as well And I'm thinking I have a chipboard heart oh that's looking pretty cool yeah that's the one that's the final finish now I need to put it somewhere where I can still lift my page up uh, so I'm not going to adhere it to the page I'm going to adhere it to the flap so when you lift the flap up this will come up too so in order to do that I'm going to have to cover this back piece but that's okay so I'm going to use some of that cardstock that was left over avoiding the Nouveau drops of course but of course and I'm just going to cut around that so this was I think something from spotlight I picked up I think it was just part of a scrapbooking um, I was on special actually I picked up this was a baby girl I picked up baby boy I thought 
Oh, I think I'll have some use for that. But I do like chipboards, or some people call these flares. I think they actually add that tiny bit of dimension. You can see I've got dimension here. I want some dimension somewhere else on the page. So I'm going to adhere this here. Oh, love it. Oh, that's just finished it off perfectly. And because I've put that cardstock on the back of it, it's not going to stick when I when I use my flip or my tip in to do my journaling. Okay, that's it. That's it done. I'm going to bring it up and show you. I didn't use any of these sequins. I brought them in in case I wanted sequins, but you know, it doesn't need sequins. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I'm so thrilled with how it turned out. I can't tell you how happy this makes me to see a scrapbook page come together like this. Um, two very precious days. The day I got engaged and the day my daughter had a very special party and our whole family was there to celebrate. Love this. Absolutely love this. So let me know in the comments what your favourite type of scrapbooking is or favourite type of crafting. You may not be a scrapbooker, you may be a card maker, you may be somebody who loves mixed media art. Let me know. I want to know what it is that you're interested in. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me today. I know I love talking to you guys and I love the fact that we are building a community together and that um, you can come over onto my Instagram and put any of the projects that you're doing with the hashtag Vicky Parfano stamps and I'll check them out. I'd love to see what you're making. <laughs> All right. Okay. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.